Hi, I'm Christina and this is a book review of The Marriage Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell. So this is a historical fiction novel, it was published in 2022 and it's been long listed for the Women's Prize for Fiction in 2023. This book is set in Italy and it spans the time period of 1544 to 1561. Our main character is called Lucrezia and she is the daughter of the Grand Duke of Tuscany. She is 15 years old and she is now engaged to be wed to the Duke of Ferrara. So I quite enjoyed this book. I've given this one four stars and I have to say I think my favourite part about it is the fact that it is based on a real person. So in the very beginning of the book there is a historical note to tell you about who this woman is. So in 1560, 15 year old Lucrezia left Florence to begin her married life with Alfonso, Duke of Ferrara. Less than a year later, she would be dead. The official cause of her death was given as putrid fever, but it was rumoured that she had been murdered by her husband. So that's the real event that happened and she has taken this woman and there isn't very much known about her and she's made this brilliant work of fiction and yeah I definitely think that is my favourite aspect of this. The writing in this is really beautiful and I do think the depiction of Italy is absolutely wonderful and it really does kind of transport you to this time and this place. So the majority of the book is well some of the book is set in Florence and some of the book is set in Ferrara. Now the reason that she is engaged to him so young is that her sister Maria was engaged to be married to Alfonso the Duke of Ferrara but she sadly passed away and now Lucrezia has been kind of offered to him in marriage in Maria's place. So from the very beginning we find out that Lucrezia is probably um, the most unloved child of the couple. She is their fifth child and she's always been a little bit different from the rest of the children, so much so that they kind of just leave her to be raised in the kitchens for a time and she doesn't even get to be in the same nursery as the rest of her siblings. So I think from the very beginning she's kind of marked out as slightly different. Um, in terms of the rest of the siblings and I don't know if she would have ever kind of reached the lofty heights of a duchess if it wasn't for her sister's death and then the duke specifically requested um, that he could marry her. So that's the kind of character that she is. So obviously we first meet her at the age of about 15, 16 years old. She has been married to Alfonso for one year and she is very concerned about her safety and she believes that he does wish to kill her. And then we travel back in time to the year of 1544 and we see the moment of her conception between her father and her mother and we just kind of see her mother's perspective on her and how she feels she's such a wild child and so very different from the rest of her siblings. And then we kind of span these 16 years between her life. We watch her grow up, we watch her become um, a teenager and yeah it's really nice to follow Lucrezia as a character. I think you are very much rooting for her in this story. She's just a very nice girl in the beginning and then obviously she's thrown into this world that she is so unprepared for. There's so much Kind of political games going on and it's so very dangerous for her and obviously she is so young she's only 15 when she leaves Florence to go and live with him and she meets um, his sisters and obviously everybody at court are playing games that she can barely even conceptualize and fathom because she is so much younger than everyone else. Alfonso himself her husband is 27 years old so he has 12 years her senior and obviously he's very much intense on making a male heir so that's pretty much her whole job is to produce a son for him and for various reasons that doesn't seem to be happening and then obviously the intrigue with her sisters and then finding out if they truly wish her well or if everyone's just using her for their own kind of political game and she kind of becomes a and a pawn in everybody else's game if you will. So one of my favourite kind of scenes in this is when she is a child and the reason the tiger is on the front cover, um, a tigress is brought to the palace in Florence. So her father, the Grand Duke 
of Tuscany um, has a menagerie of animals in his palace. He has um, two lions, a lioness and a lion. He has a bear, a wolf, all sorts of things. And he decides one day that he would like a tiger. So that's what happens. And a tigress comes to live in the palace. And we see the meeting between Lucrezia and the tigress. And yeah, I really like that part of it. I thought it was really, really good. I would say that the first part of the novel for me is the strongest and then towards the middle it gets a little bit long for me there were places where I was a little bit bored in the middle I will say and then it definitely picks up later so one of my things that I didn't like quite so much about it is the fact that it does get very long in the middle and I do think it maybe could be a little bit shorter so it is quite a long book as you can see and for me I think the pacing was slightly off and that did affect my enjoyment so I was very intrigued in the beginning and there were definitely times in the middle where it was just kind of not quite as fast as I would have hoped. It's very, very slow paced. And obviously we only have the 16 years of life to span. Um, so when we go back and see when she's conceived and then obviously she's married at the age of 15. And then obviously when we meet her, she's the age of 16. So we don't have too much time to play with. Um, but yeah, that little middle section got a, a little bit long for me, I will say. There are times when I just wanted it to hurry up and speed up a little bit. So because of that, I've given this one four stars and that's, yeah, purely for the pacing and the, just the length of it in the middle and how I was just hoping it would hurry up a little bit. I think the writing itself is excellent and the character of Lucrezia, I really like her and obviously you're very much rooting for her. It's very easy to like this character. And then in terms of um, other characters in the book, I have to say, I think the kind of found family aspect were my favourites, even though um, they are people that are employed by the family. So her nursemaid, as she was growing up, is called Sophia. And I really like the relationship between her and Lucrezia. And just seeing what Sophia actually does for Lucrezia in terms of her future and how far she's willing to go, um, to protect her. I really enjoyed that part of it and I really like Sophia as a character. She's a very kind of able, wise woman who really does want the best for the children in her care. And then one of the other characters that I really like is her maid who is called Amelia and I think she's probably one of my favourite characters too and their kind of relationship is quite sweet as well and she's the only person who leaves Florence with her, everybody else is brand new. And she's actually, um, they call her my milk sister in the sense that um, Lucrezia's wet nurse was this maid's mother. So they were kind of um, raised together in the kitchen. They used to play together as children and the maid always kind of looked out for her even before she was her maid. Um, so yes, I like those characters. Um, I think that worked really well. And overall, yeah, I think the depictions of Italy are excellent. I will say that I wasn't 100% sure on the ending. Um, so obviously you know that this is a true like figure that exists in history. Um, and obviously you know the end of the book because it tells you in the very beginning that she died when she was 16 years old. Um, but the, the ending itself, I was a little bit disappointed by. And I think that was just because is kind of not what would happen and yeah I just I wasn't 100% keen on it I think the other thing as well is the sense that there was so much foreshadowing um, about what the ending would be that I very much could predict the ending I think for probably about the halfway point you definitely know what's going to happen I would say um, and yeah I think that did affect my enjoyment a little bit so there's a reason why I wouldn't give it five stars but I have given it four stars probably a lower kind of four stars and that generally is just because of the pacing it does it got a little bit slow in the middle I have to say there were times when I was like not really wanting to pick it back up because it was just so long and um, it definitely lost my attention a little bit in the middle and then I think um, when we started seeing Lucrezia with um, her husband's sisters it started to pick up for me a little bit again um, but yeah, that part in the middle, um, definitely think some of it could have been cut out. So yeah, if you have read this book, I would love to know your thoughts on it down in the comments below. 
Um, if you fancy reading this book now, definitely let me know that too. I would say that I think the cover is absolutely beautiful. And I think as soon as this book came out, I was intrigued by it because of the cover. And obviously you're not meant to judge a book by its cover, but when one is just so appealing like this, I definitely think it has an impact. It had an impact on me anyway. As soon as I first saw it in the bookshops, I was like, I definitely want to read that book. And then obviously now it's been long listed for the Women's Prize. Now I have uh, picked it up. So yeah, in terms of the Women's Prize for Fiction, this is the second book that I have read from that. Um, like completely read it. So the first one was Cursed Bread and I really enjoyed that one. I gave that one five stars. I will link my book review down below just in case you're interested on the Women's Prize for Fiction. And then yeah, I gave this one four stars. So in terms of the Women's Prize, I do think I prefer Cursed Bread over this one. Um, but this one, it's a really nice historical fiction novel and I have to say, I do really like this kind of time in history and I think it's really interesting to kind of, for the for the author to kind of focus on a somewhat obscure figure in history because I'd, I'd never heard of her and then kind of centralise her in this novel. Um, I really like that aspect of it and I will say at the very end as well when she gives you the actual historical like context of what happened like the author's note in the end it's really really interesting and so much more happens in real life that isn't even touched on in this book and it's quite it's quite intriguing so i definitely think i'm going to be researching a little bit about the real people um in this book just because i am now so intrigued um by what actually happened and um, so obviously this is the her fictionalized tale of what happened I would be very curious to have a little dig around and especially for some of the other characters in this book and there's definitely a theme going on and um, so yeah I'm definitely yeah definitely interested in doing that so thank you so much for watching please do like the video if you've liked it and please do subscribe if you'd like to hear more of me talking about books I'll see you in my next one bye